गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स होप यू आर फिट एंड फाइन स्टूडेंट्स एज वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द न्यूटन फर्स्ट एंड सेकेंड लॉ ऑफ मोशन इन आर प्रीवियस वीडियोज टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट न्यूटन थर्ड लॉ ऑफ मोशन लर्निंग आउटकम्स आफ्टर द कंप्लीशन ऑफ द टॉपिक स्टूडेंट्स you will be able to define newton's third law of motion identify action and reaction forces from the given pair of forces differentiate action and reaction forces from balanced forces and list various examples where newton's third law is applied and you will be able to apply newton's third law of motion in real life situations this means by the end of this topic you will be able to achieve all these points so please listen this video carefully and check where have you achieved these learning outcomes students let's revise newton's first law of motion we know an object is at rest will remain at rest and the object in motion will remain in motion kab tak unless and until it is acted upon by an unbalanced force let's what does this mean this means an object will keep doing what it was doing means that if it was at rest then it will remain at rest and if it is moving at constant velocity then it will keep on moving only when there is no external force on it means force is required to change the motion of an object see if an object is at rest it will stay at rest unless a net force acts on it means this football will remain where it is but if it is moving then it will keep on moving unless a net force acts on it now newton's second law of motion we have already done this also let's have a quick review of it we know that from newton's second law we get f is equal to ma where f is the force and m mass and a is acceleration acceleration means how fast how quickly the object is changing its speed let's see it newton's second law if the same force is applied on an object with greater mass then the object accelerates at slower rate what does this mean see the picture here if the object is applying a great force on the given mass there is acceleration but if the mass increases if the mass of the object will increase with the same force the acceleration will be lesser so f is equal to ma we can have the three forms of the second law one is we can use it as a equals to f by m when we are to calculate a and we are given with f and m similarly f is equal to ma when we want to calculate force and for f is uh, m is equal to f by a for the calculation of mass while studying newton's second law of motion we have also studied about momentum let's see the review of it momentum is a physical quantity denoted by symbol p it is calculated by the product of mass and velocity physically it means the quantity of motion contained in a body and if we make the mass of an object constant then momentum will be directly proportional to velocity see this graph as the velocity is increasing momentum will also increase and we can also increase the momentum by increasing the mass of an object if mass of an object is increasing then also momentum will increase 
Now let's look upon the mathematical formulation of Newton's second law. We have also studied this and these are the seven important points to memorize the mathematical formulation of Newton's second law of motion. First of all, momentum is P equals to mv and if we start the object from velocity uh, u and uh, it has changed the velocity from u to v then change in momentum will be p2 minus p1 that is this and from second law f is equal to change in momentum upon time so we can write change in momentum upon time as f but change in momentum is mv minus mu so we can write it as like this and then substituting the value of acceleration we get f is equal to ma now let's come to the newton's third law of motion in the previous lecture we have defined it we have seen the video of newton's third law and i hope you everyone knows that it the statement that is for every action there is equal and opposite reaction. Now let's explore it further to know what actually this law means. The third law of motion states that when one object exerts a force on another object then what will happen? The second object also instantaneously exert a force back on the first means if f a it is the force exerted by object a on b we can denote it as f a b and then b will also exert the equal force that is f b a means force exerted by b on a but the direction of the force exerted by b will be in the opposite direction forces that means two forces are acting and let's discuss these two forces actually these two forces are action and reaction forces now, what is the action force it is the force exerted by first body on the second means in the previous diagram the force exerted by body a on body B that was the action force and the force exerted by second body on the first is called reaction force means the B body second body the force that it will exert on the first one will be the reaction force. Now properties of action and reaction forces. Now what are the properties actually these forces are number one they are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction i think you are confusing it with balanced forces isn't it actually these are not balanced forces no doubt they are equal in magnitude and they are opposite in direction but actually these forces act on different objects and never on the same object means in balance forces the action and reaction if the two forces are there the both the forces will act on the same body in there, that case we say that the net force is zero but here we are talking about the forces that are acting on different objects that are the action and reaction forces means we have just discussed in the previous also if force exerted by object 1 on object 2 that is force F12 then the second object will exert a force F21 means force exerted by 2 on 1 both the forces will be equal means they are equal in magnitude but in opposite direction this negative sign shows that the forces are acting in the opposite direction. Let's summarize. In the first law, we have defined that object will remain there where it is unless a force, external force acts on it. That means it, uh, the first law is the law of inertia. And in the second law, 
we have got the formula to calculate the force acting on an object and that force is given by F equals to MA. Now in the third law we have learnt about the equal and opposite forces acting on two different objects. Applications of Newton's third law of motion. Let's discuss its application in day-to-day -day life. First of all, let's consider this balloon. When the air rushes down, then the reaction of this is that the balloon goes up. So here the action forces is the air that rushes out and the reaction is the balloon that goes up. In the second example, this is the running on a ground. What happens actually? We are applying Newton's third law. How? When the runner pushes back and down on the ground, only then he is able to move forward because he is applying the action force and the ground pushes towards up on the runner and make the runner move. That is why the runner is able to move and this is the application of Newton's third law. Another example, when a person tries to come out of the boat, what happens is when he moves forward, then the reaction force is that the boat will move backward. While moving on the ground, what happens is the ground is at rest. So when it pushes the ground backward, the uh, ground pushes it forward. But here, when the uh, person move, wants to move out of it, then the reaction is that the boat will move backward. So, what will happen is, when when person wants to move out of the boat, then someone has to hold the boat. Otherwise, the person will fall into the water. Next, rocket propulsion. What happens is, the gases, hot gases, comes out from the bottom. And this is the action force and the reaction of this is that the rocket will move forward. The reaction force is acting on the rocket and the action force is acting on the gases. So it is also the application of Newton's third law of motion. Last, rowing a boat. See, when a person rows the boat, what, what it is doing actually, he is moving the water backward. Pushing the water backward. This is the action force. And the reaction force acts on the boat. The water applies the reaction force on the boat and the boat moves forward. So I hope you can demonstrate Newton's third law in our day to day life. Now let's discuss one interesting example of a recoil of a gun. Here we will prove that. Although action and reaction forces are equal and opposite, but they can produce different acceleration on the two objects. Here, I am talking of a recoil of a gun. When bullet is fired from the gun, then gun recoils back. Now, acceleration of the bullet moving forward and the acceleration of the gun moving backward is different. How it happens? Because the action and reaction forces are always equal in magnitude. But remember, these forces may not produce accelerations of equal magnitude. Acceleration can be different because here masses are different. See, this side, F is equal to MA, so acceleration will be equal to F upon M. Agree? Now, for the bullet, mass of the bullet is very small. So, F over M will be very large. That means acceleration of the bullet is large and for the gun f over m mass of gun is very large as compared to bullet so the fraction f over m will be small but f over m is acceleration so acceleration of gun will be lesser so this was the example of recoil of a gun to our book here in ncrt page Number 122, Newton's third law is completely explained. So, let's see. 
the first two laws of tells us that how the force applied force changes the motion and provide us with the method of determining the force but the third law of motion states that when one object exerts a force on another object the second object instantaneously exerts a force back on the first see the first force that the one object exerts is action force and the second object that exerts a force back that is called a reaction force and what are their properties these forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction secondly these forces act on different objects and never on the same objects okay now see the example of a spring balance also if we tie a spring balance to one rigid support and uh, make like this arrangement is like this and if we try to pull the spring balance towards ourselves what will happen both the readings of the spring balance will be same means if we apply the force on the second spring balance the reading on the first spring balance will also be same means action is on the first spring balance but reaction will be seen on the second spring balance and both the forces are equal and opposite now students check yourself do you know these points that means you know the definition of newton's third law of motion now now you can identify action and reaction forces from the given pair of forces and also you can differentiate the action reaction forces from balance forces now you will be able to enlist the examples of newton's third law of motion also you know the applications of newton's third law of motion in real life situations hope you have achieved these outcomes if you find any problem please watch the video again until you have achieved all these points thank you